Hi everyone, hope you're having a great day. So today, a long overdue drone tutorial. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these. But what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about the C1, the control buttons, the C1 and the C2 button on the back of your Mavic 2 Pro controller. So let's get right to it. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If this happens to be your first time here, my name is Russ and this is 51 Drones. On this channel, you're gonna find all kinds of content, mostly about high quality camera drones, things like tutorials, reviews, comparisons, drone laws, and then also I do some tech related product reviews. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the notification bell. So like I said, it's been a long time since I've done a drone tutorial and what kind of sparked my making this video is one of my subscribers whose name is Russell, very cool name. Thank you Russell for the suggestion. He asked me to do a tutorial on the C1 and the C2 buttons on the Mavic 2 Pro controller. And when I started looking, I actually couldn't find anything. There really isn't any tutorial on what these buttons do. There's a few little tidbits of information out there, you know, when people talk about the controller, but nobody that I have found anyway uh, on YouTube or any other websites or blogs or anything like that that goes through these in detail and explains what each of the settings do, what each of the functions do. And so that's what I want to do today. So thank you, Russell, for the suggestion. It's really weird to say your own name. Thank you for the suggestion. And so that's what we're gonna to do today. So let's get right down to business. And so to get to the settings, to change your C1 and your C2 buttons, you're gonna click on the settings up there in the upper right hand corner, the three little dots. Then you're gonna click on the remote controller icon right over there. And that's where you're gonna see the button customization, the back of the controller, the C2 and the C1. So let's go ahead and click on C1 and we're gonna to go to the first one where it says turn on and off LED lights. Now what this does is it turns off your front LED lights, those red ones, and why that's important, why you might wanna do that is if you're filming in low light situations or maybe in the dark, what's gonna happen is if those LED lights are on, you're gonna get some red ambient light in your images. In your photography or in your videography, you're gonna get some red glares in your images and you don't want that. And so in those low light situations, you really should turn off those LED lights. And so you can set your C1 button to do that quickly. Just go ahead and push that and that's gonna turn off those lights. The next one down the line is the center metering. And what that means is it's gonna meter for the center of the frame. And so a good situation to use this, if you're shooting a 50% horizon, if you're shooting you know, half sky, half ground, you want it to meter for as much as possible both situations. You wanna get those darks as light as you can, and you wanna get those lights as dark as you can to try to keep them as even as possible. And so you know, if you want the center of the frame to be metered properly, just go ahead and set it to that click on the button and that's gonna meter for the center of the frame. The next one down the line is the auto exposure lock and unlock. Now this one is very useful for situations where you want an exposure. So I'm gonna show you an example right here. Let's say I wanna expose for the foreground right here. I want my lighting to be just right. And there it looks pretty good. I look at my histogram, it looks pretty good. I might turn it up just a little bit. I think that was pretty good right where it's at. So we're gonna leave it right at zero exposure compensation. I have the camera set to auto, and so what that's gonna do is it's gonna change the exposure as I change the camera uh, angle. And so what I wanna do is, right now I wanna expose for the foreground, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that, make sure it's focused, click on the C1 button, and that's gonna lock my exposure. You'll see in the upper right hand corner, the little blue paddle lock and the AE, that means the exposure is locked. So no matter where I point the camera, it's gonna keep those same camera settings. And that's useful because What's gonna happen is if you don't have that turned on and you got some dark foreground and some light skies or whatever, if you have changing lighting situations, what's gonna happen is your, your image, your video is gonna go in and out, it's gonna be dark, it's gonna be light, and it's gonna look terrible. And so if you wanna keep your exposure the same all the way through, go ahead and set it to that. You can quickly click on the C1 button, quickly kick, quickly click, well, that's hard to say. Quickly click it off and, uh, and then it'll go back to normal exposure. And so if you go up, it's gonna expose for the sky. If you go down, it's gonna expose for the foreground. And um, see, see what happens when you do that? Your exposure goes in and out, it gets dark, it gets light and stuff like that. So you should really lock that exposure for whatever you're trying to focus on. 
Now next setting down the line is the camera settings and what that does is you click on that button that's going to bring up your camera settings. Now this is useful for if you're flying and you don't want to take your thumb off those control sticks, you don't want to take your fingers off the controller, you can pop up your camera settings and just get a good look at them and see exactly what they're set at. And then you can also quickly maybe move your thumb over. I know it doesn't really make sense that you would, you know, clicking over here is easier than moving your thumb down. But if you're using this um, right control stick, you really don't want to take your thumb off that long because you can really screw up your shot. And so using the C1 buttons to um, bring up the camera settings can be very useful in those situations where you don't want to take your thumbs off the control sticks. Next one down the line is camera forward and down. And I'm guessing that most of you that use your C1 and your C2 buttons have one of them set to this. This is useful for two situations. Number one, if there's something below you, directly below you that you want to capture quickly, click on that C1 button and the camera's going to go down and forward. Click it again and it's going to go straight up to a 50% horizon. The other thing that this is useful for, and this is what I use it for, is for landing. When you're coming home, you're returning to home and you want to see the ground below, you want to see exactly where you're positioned, you go ahead and click that C1 button. That's going to bring the camera right down so you can see your landing position, see your landing pad or whatever. And so you know where you're at, especially if you're up 300 feet in the air and you're not quite sure exactly where you're at. If you have the camera flip down quickly, then you know exactly where you are. The next one down the line is the FPV mode and follow mode. So you can switch between FPV and follow. And what this does is it locks the roll. Um, oops, see now I didn't change the uh, I didn't change the camera back up before I flipped over. So let's put that back. Let's go to uh, camera forward down. Click on C1. There we go. Bring it back up. So that is a, a good reminder. If you are going to change your C1 and C2 buttons, make sure you disable whatever you just enabled by using those buttons. So let's bring it back up again. Let's go into FPV mode slash follow mode. And if you click on that and that locks it into FPV mode and what that's going to do, that's going to lock your roll axis. And so as you turn, let's go ahead and fly here. See your horizon is going to change. Okay, because it's going to lock that roll axis and so go ahead and click on that and then we'll fly again and that's going to hold your gimbal steady and so it's kind of fun to do it i guess it's actually more fun if you have the dji goggles or other goggles um, to fly without it it's kind of confusing if you've never done it before so i wouldn't recommend using that on a regular basis if you don't have the dji goggles i hear a train coming let's go ahead and yep there he is let's go ahead and pan down Let's get some epic B-roll and I'm going to have to wait till it goes by anyway. So we're going to pause this for just a second. All right. So that was the longest, slowest train that I've ever seen in my entire life. So I had to bring the drone home, put on a different battery. Uh, so yeah, so sorry for that little pause there, but let's get down the line. We just talked about FPV mode and follow mode. The next one is the switch GS. FPV. Now, not sure what GS stands for, um, but all this does is it brings up your map view and your live view. So I don't know why it doesn't say map view slash live view. If you do know what GS slash FPV means, or maybe it means something else on a different drone, maybe on the Phantom or the Inspire or whatever, and they just didn't change it uh, for the Mavic. So let me know what that means if you know, but all that does is it brings up your map view and your live view and so that's you can change it to that that's kind of nice to have um i guess that's not one i'm going to use but next one is battery info and that's going to bring up your battery now this is useful for if you want to keep an eye on a battery maybe you have a battery that hasn't been performing well and you want to check on it while you're flying or if you're flying in extreme conditions like really hot temperatures or really cold temperatures you want to keep an eye on that temperature you just click on that that's going to bring up your settings it's going to show your voltage that's remaining and it brings up your flight time and, and everything like that. And so that one is useful as well. And let's go down. Next one is navigation. Not sure why they call it navigation. What that is, is that's your intelligent flight modes. Click on that button and that's gonna pop up all your options for the intelligent flight modes. The next one down the line is replay. And this is for bringing up your photos and your videos that are stored on the drone, either on the memory card or on the internal storage. So click on that button, that's gonna bring up you know everything that you've recorded and everything that's on that card or the internal storage now this is something that i don't really think i would use while i'm flying you know maybe when i'm landed and i want to bring it up quickly but um you know but the option is there so 
Next one on the line is center autofocus. Center autofocus, if you're gonna, let's say you're focusing over here on the left hand side and you're flying around and your situation is changing, you wanna quickly focus on something that's in the center of the frame, click on that button and that's gonna focus in the center of the frame. Again, this is useful for when you don't wanna take your fingers or your thumbs off of the remote controller. The next one on the line is closed tips. I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no idea what this is. I can't find anything on it anywhere. I scoured the internet, I looked on the forums, I looked everywhere and I could not find what closed tips mean. So if you know, please let me know in the comments so the rest of us can be educated on what that means. The next one on the list is the bottom auxiliary lighting. This is one that I'm sure is very popular. A lot of people use it. I don't use it that much, but it can be useful for maybe a situation where you want to get some artsy stuff, some crafty photos or whatever, you know, have the drone fly above you and quickly turn the light on or off. Or maybe you want to take a photo or a video of something below you in low light conditions. You know, you're going to put your camera down with C1 and then with C2, you're going to turn on that auxiliary lighting. So you're going to light up the ground below you. And so that one is very useful. And I have seen uh, some people use that in some of the videos that I've watched. The next one down the line, the last one from the bottom is enable and disable visual obstacle avoidance. Now, this is one that can be useful, but actually it's one that I don't recommend, especially if you're a new pilot, you're just getting used to flying your drone, you wanna have your obstacle avoidance on as much as possible. The reason I don't recommend setting your C1 or your C2 buttons to this is because if you're flying around and you accidentally bump that and you don't realize that you bumped it and then your obstacle avoidance is turned off, yes, you do get a warning telling you hey, you're turning off your obstacle avoidance, but who knows, you might miss that, you might accidentally bump that button, and then you're flying around in a situation where you need, really need that obstacle avoidance, and you don't have it. So if you're a new flyer, and you haven't flown without obstacle avoidance very much, I would not set your C1 or your C2 buttons to that one. And then finally, the last one on the list is undefined. And what that means is if you click that button, nothing's going to happen. And so nothing is assigned to that particular button. And so that's all the settings for the C1 and the C2 buttons on the Mavic 2 Pro controller. I'll tell you the ones that I use the most. I kind of told you already. I use the auto exposure lock and unlock. I think that's very useful for those situations where you're changing your camera angle a lot and you want to keep exposure for the particular thing that you're focusing on. So I use that one. The other one that I use for my C2 is I use the quick camera forward and down and as you can see it's already set there I use that one all the time especially for landing because I really want to know where I'm situated in the sky as I'm coming down especially if I'm in a tight situation I don't do that too often I try to fly from I try to launch from a situation where it's wide open I don't have to worry about that but there have been times where I need to land exactly where I took off from and so I'll just quickly put that camera down and I'll see the landing pad below and then it helps me maneuver my drone as I land and so those are the two that I use you guys might use something different. Maybe you prefer to use something different. Let me know down in the comments. Which functions do you have your C1 and your C2 buttons set to? Thanks again to Russell for the suggestion. If you guys got anything of value out of this video, go ahead and click on that thumbs up button. Let me know that you liked it. That really does help out this video. Also helps out the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, just a reminder, go ahead and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. I wanna thank you all sincerely for watching today. As always, fly safe and fly smart.